So hi everybody and hopefully you're all back to see part three of the technique series. So as I say this is part three, if you haven't seen the other two videos that I've done, if you click up here that will take you to a playlist and it's got all the videos in where we talk in lots of detail about getting everything right with our technique. As always if you do enjoy this video remember to give it a like, if you're new to the channel and you haven't already subscribed please consider subscribing, that just helps me to keep all this content coming nice and regularly. Just a reminder, if anyone's interested in any personal one-to-one -one coaching sessions on this very table, I'm working with players all the time to help them to improve their game. So if you have a look in the description box below, you'll see all my details there. Please get in touch with me and I'd love to help with your game. So let's get into this video. We're going to look in detail at getting the delivery right, keeping still, and then also keeping things nice and natural. Right, now we actually need to talk about the final delivery here now. So obviously I've played a lot of shots and I've been delivering the cue each time while we talked about the backswing and the grip and the feathers here. We're actually going to talk in detail now about the things that you should be thinking about when you're actually delivering the cue. So let me just play a shot here and we'll just look at some of the really important things. So the first thing with your delivery, a little bit like the backswing, is that we want the cue to build up speed smoothly. You don't want to feel like once you've done your backswing, you're suddenly just going naught to maximum speed straight away. You want to think about that cue delivery a bit more like a plane taking off on a runway. So the plane starts to build up speed and then it gets faster and goes to its fastest speed. So it's nice and smooth and then it goes. So if you watch one of these here, I'm going to hit this shot reasonably firm. So get down again, do a couple of feathers, and then back swing, and then the delivery. You'll have seen the first part of my delivery there, nice and smooth, and then it starts to build up power. That offers a lot more control for us as humans, again, to control our arm. It's a little bit like, if you remember, the, the buzzer games that you might play, and you try to avoid the, the buzzer hitting the wire and then the buzzer going off. Exactly the same with our cue delivery there. In order for us to have our muscles nice and relaxed and keep the cue in a straight line, it's much better for us to do things smoothly and a bit slower with more control and keep all of our muscles nice and relaxed. So that's the first big thing to be thinking of there with the delivery, that you want the speed to build up nice and smoothly. There's no rush to get the cue delivered to absolute maximum speed straight away. So we'll just play one more of those. So I'm walking into the shot. Down on the shot, a couple of feathers there, back swing smooth, and then the delivery nice and smooth as well. Now the second incredibly important thing here is hitting from the elbow that you'll hear coaches say. And that means that what you're really trying to do is you're trying to pivot from this elbow joint instead of what you see some players do, and they do that to deliver the cue. So they'll be dropping the arm through the shot, which does move the cue forward, but it causes the cue to scoop and it's also unreliable because you've got this moving part where your arm is moving up and down and when that's happening you've got to try and keep that movement right in a straight line whereas what we're trying to do is just move just pivot from the elbow so that you're keeping the cue nice and straight so that's incredibly important so I'll just give an example here let's just say I was to not hit from the elbow very well so I'm down on the shot do my feathers and then I'll come back not very far, this is what you see, and then you'll see players scooping, and they might miss the shot because they've really dropped the arm into the shot there. So what I'm trying to do instead is feel like I'm hitting my shot. So I keep everything flat, and then I feel like I hit from there, and the hand comes forward. So we'll just try one more of those, and I'm going to try and get it right this time. I'm standing up behind the shot, walk into the shot, get everything right, do my feathers, back, and then hit from the elbow to my chest, and that's kept everything nice and smooth. I didn't build the speed up too quickly, and I didn't scoop the cue. I kept the cue nice and flat all the way through delivery. Now, the final thing to be aware of when you're playing these shots is hitting the hand to the chest. Now, you'll have heard this a lot, and I've talked about this in my YouTube videos, but this is incredibly important because what we're trying to do with snooker is build up muscle memory so that we're doing a repetitive motion over and over again and that sticks in our mind and by repeating that same movement that's how you build up your consistency. 
So there's no shot really, other than very, very low power shots where you're literally dropping a ball in. So if I was dropping a ball into like a middle pocket, dead weight, and I didn't want the white to travel very far, there's no need to move my arm really far forward because the shot is such low power. But for 99% of shots around the table, I'm trying to, once I've done that backswing, deliver my hand and just get it to, just rest against the chest. You're not punching yourself in the chest and really going through with some aggression again. It's nice and relaxed, nice and calm. You're going back and then you're letting the hand come into the chest and just naturally relax against the chest. And that's what's going to give you that consistent control. And as we briefly touched on earlier, the control of the cue ball purely comes from where you're hitting up and down, whether you want it to roll forward, stay where it is, or come back towards you purely do that by where you're actually going to strike on the cue ball. So here, I'm going to try and get all those things right. So I'm going to hit from the elbow. I'm going to build the speed up smoothly and I'm going to get my hand all the way to my chest. So cue comes back and then hit to my chest. And I've just got my hand resting against my chest exactly how I wanted there. So I've got that nice pivot point. I'm not dropping the elbow too soon in the delivery and then you've got that nice consistent flat cue going through building up speed slowly and that's how you get as much control as you possibly can when you're playing shots now the last thing to just quickly mention about elbow drop is that some players actually do have elbow drop so if you look at players like sean murphy ronnie o'sullivan mark selby when they're playing they will have an element of the elbow dropping but it's happening after after the q-tip has made contact with the white and that's what's so important so when i'm first seeing clients on the table and I'm, I'm working with these people for the first time and we're starting to improve their game you'll find that what they're doing is dropping the elbow much too soon in the delivery so at first it's best to just think of just pivoting from the elbow joint and not worry about any of the dropping now if i was to if i just put this cue ball offline and i wanted to generate lots of screw back on this red for example here so i want the white to really screw back now i might drop my elbow but it will be after i've played the shot so do everything right again back swing flat and then you'll have seen that i've gone right through and actually in the end i've dropped my elbow but if you were to look at that shot you'll see i've hit the cue ball and then my elbow starts to drop but at first i would say don't worry too much about your elbow dropping what you want to do is just pivot from that elbow joint and over time once you've got used to that you'll find that naturally if you're somebody that likes to drop your elbow it'll just happen on certain higher power shots there's some absolutely top players judd trump neil robertson don't drop the elbow they never do it even on high power shots they stop at the chest and they don't need to have that elbow drop so again just to recap there the incredibly important things are build the speed up of the cue nice and smoothly so that you gain that maximum control Deliver the hand all the way to the chest on every single shot so you're building up that consistent muscle memory every single time. Make sure you hit from the elbow and that you're not dropping the elbow to generate that cue speed and, and the delivery because then you gain that scooping motion again. We want the cue to stay nice and flat. So those are your main points with the delivery and that should help you again get that really consistent positive strike every time. Now the last thing in this technique section that's incredibly important to get right is staying still on the shot. Now the reason that's incredibly important and you always hear about players staying still is because it's a number of things that it does that really helps us improve as players. One is that you're getting a consistent way of hitting the ball, you're not moving, you know that you stay still and you haven't got any movement. And the thing that's great about that is that when you're under a bit of pressure, if you've got a tendency to move, it can easily cause you to move too soon and you'll miss a pot. The reason players try and keep nice and still is because they won't have that movement. If you ingrain that habit of staying really still when you deliver the cue and the only thing that's moving is the arm and nothing else, then it means that under pressure you've formed a fantastic habit that you can fall back on. It means you can feel a little bit nervous and you'll still get a good delivery. So on this one here, I'm behind the shot again, let's walk into the shot. Let's do everything right, so a couple of feathers up, pause at the white, keep everything flat, deliver the cue, stay down, no head movement until the object ball has either disappeared or stopped moving and then you can get up off the shot. Now the second thing about keeping still that's incredibly important is it gives you the feedback when you're learning that you need. If you jump up off a shot too quickly, 
The first thing that you don't get is you don't see where the object ball has gone. So if it hits the far jaw or if it, or if it hits the near jaw, you're not getting that feedback that your brain wants because you've jumped up off the shot, you might be a bit disappointed and you haven't then got some data that you've got stored that you can then learn from and implement on your next shot. Then the other thing it does is you're not also watching what's happening with the cue ball and then you get your feedback again there and then you're building more data and then all of that data keeps on storing and that's what you then work on as a player. You're getting more and more of that information stored in your mind and that's what helps you to become a better player. So let's just recap with staying still then. It's incredibly important because you've got a consistent way of hitting. When you're under pressure, you're less likely to move because you're ingraining that habit of staying nice and still. There's not as many moving parts in your action. That's why it's very important. And then you're also getting your feedback on the object ball and also watching where the cue ball is going as well. So if I play one more of these here, whenever I'm trying to do this, I'm always just working on building up these habits on these shots just to the middle here so you're not doing anything that seems far too difficult and then you can do all of your habits walk in get down do your feathers keep everything still stay down on the shot and then you get your feedback and you've stayed still and you're ingraining in a fantastic habit Now an important last section I wanted to talk about here in terms of technique and actually this goes for everything that we've talked about in this video series so all from sighting to how you're standing on the shot thinking about your setup and then the technique that we've talked about is that you have to try and get these things so that they're happening naturally. Now when I first started to improve my game all of these ideas and concepts were completely new to me. I didn't know about keeping the cue flat or how my grip should be behaving or staying still so that I was getting my feedback on the shot. So all of these things were new ideas and at first you have to consciously think about them so that they're happening and so that you start to get those improvements. But then what you want to happen is you still need a lot of natural touch and feel in your game. So you don't want to feel like when you're getting down now because of the things we've discussed that you're lining up from here, you're always going to be walking in really slowly to get the feet right, then you get down, you pause at the white, you start doing some feathers, you think about your backswing and your delivery and your pause and you stay still and you play the shot. In the end, you're probably going to hold yourself back by concentrating too much on trying to get everything absolutely perfect on the shot. So what we're trying to do, and this is why I wanted to add this thing, make sure that when you work through these things, and the way I did it was I used to work through almost like a checklist. So after watching this video series, I would go away and think, okay, I've got lots of new ideas. I can think about my backswing, my grip, my delivery. And I would work through those things one by one. You can't do them all at once. So what I would do at a practice session is I would just be thinking about keeping still on the shot. That's the only thing I'd be thinking about. Once I felt like I was doing that more naturally, at my next practice session, I might think about just controlling my backswing and having it going nice and smooth. And then eventually, once everything's happening naturally, you'll feel like I would now, where I feel like I can be chalking my cue, walk round to a red here, walk into the shot, do a couple of feathers, and then play the shot. Having nice control, keeping still, but I've still got that nice natural touch and feel. So don't turn yourself into a robot, don't turn yourself into a machine. I see that a lot with players and it actually holds a lot of players back because they're trying to be too perfect. Remember that we're still human beings, we're doing things in a way in which it sets us up for the best possible chance of success. But remember this game requires a lot of touch and feel. When you start to make bigger breaks and think about moving the cue ball around, you need a lot of touch and feel. So don't coach yourself out of all that natural touch that you would have and just trying to become perfectly like a robot. So I thought it was incredibly important just to remind people that yeah, absolutely, we need to think about these things, but what you're aiming for is to get them happening naturally so that then you can just play the game with freedom and that you're not having to try and be like a machine every single shot. Now, as I always say everybody, I really hope you've enjoyed this video, but actually more importantly, I really hope you've enjoyed this video series that I've done where I've tried to talk in as much detail as I possibly can all about the things that we should be doing as players 
to improve our technique and improve our game. So I really hope everybody's enjoyed this series. If you have, please remember to give this video a like. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I do upload videos every single week and by subscribing it just helps me to keep this content coming regularly. Just another reminder, if anyone is interested in working with me on the table, I would love to help with your game personally. I do one-to-one -one coaching sessions all the time. So if you have a look in the description box below, you'll find all my details there. If you get in touch, I would love to help. And as always, thanks a lot for watching everybody. Stay tuned for next week's video. Cheers.